could be a run on the dollar because of the growing public debt and budget deficit in the U.S. Sure. Well, in reference to the Robert Fisk article, I'm hearing the same thing here in my contacts in Paris and in the Mideast. So I'm hearing the same story. Uh, what I'm also hearing is that the basket of currencies that will replace the U.S. dollar will be much more heavily weighted in gold bullion. As much as 50 percent of the new currency scheme will be weighted in gold bullion. And the point of all this, keep in mind, is that these countries, China, Russia, and Iran, the Shanghai Cooperative Organization, they've made it really uh, no secret that they hope to take down the U.S. economy and take down the U.S. dollar. And this is a move toward taking down the U.S. dollar and the U.S. economy by shifting the way oil is priced out of the world reserve currency, the dollar, which gives America an incredible free pass to finance wars and occupations around the world. China, Iran, and Russia don't want to finance America's military adventures in Afghanistan and Iraq and possibly Iran by allowing the U.S. to have the world's reserve currency, the U.S. dollar, which gives them uh, this, uh, what they call uh, coinage, or um, the ability to make a profit on every single transaction that is done around the world because it's all done in U.S. dollars. So this is really another step toward the U.S. economy collapsing and the U.S. as a major global power collapsing. Well, you said that China and Russia are interested in collapsing the U.S. economy, but those countries, plus Japan and the Gulf states, all hold big dollar reserves. So uh, do you think they're interested in really collapsing the U.S. economy? Yes, well, they're fed up. Uh, first of all, that's why you see the gold price moving up right now. It's hitting new all-time historic highs as a way to hedge against the dollar collapse. They're trying to do it in a way that's slower rather than fast. This is a done deal. It's baked into the cake. The U.S. dollar will no longer be the world reserve currency, certainly by 2018. But I have a feeling, based on what I'm hearing and the information that I have just learned in the last two hours, uh, that this time schedule that Robert Fisk is portraying, 2018, things are going to be happening a lot faster. Well, which currencies do you think then could replace the dollar? Well, as has been mentioned, uh, the, the idea of a basket, a currency basket. Uh, they're already talking about this at the G7, the G4, and the G20, and the International Monetary Fund. We just came out of a major uh, G meeting in Pittsburgh, and the topic of discussion was creating a global currency to replace the U.S. dollar as reserve currency. They already are aware of this. They're talking about a special drawing right, which would allow all the currencies to be recalibrated and then uh, redistributed, with the U.S. dollar taking the biggest devaluation of up to 50%. I would imagine going forward, which is about what you would need for the U.S. to come in line with the global economy in terms of the incredible debts that the U.S. is carrying, that Asia is financing, that the Mideast is financing, which is one thing. But what they are objecting to, and what I'm hearing from my contacts here in Paris and in the Mideast, is that they don't want to finance America's wars anymore, because the U.S. dollar reserve currency status gives America an incredible leverage in financing wars that they don't really have to pay for. China, Russia, and Iran are paying for America's wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and possibly in Iran. And there's no strategic or philosophical reason why they're making these wars other than the war industry in America controls the White House. Obama works for the war industry, and they need wars to keep profitable, and that's the only reason we're seeing this. And this is why China, Russia, and Iran, and these other countries are saying, wait a minute, uh, we don't want to watch as this country, America, really with a horrible economy, huge debts, the only way they can extricate themselves out of their debt problem is to go into countries and commit genocide, or as they've done in Iraq, or support rogue states in the Mideast, you know, un, un, uh, uh, undocumented rogue nuclear uh, countries in the Mideast that people object to. So this is what we're seeing. But I think the timetable is going to be a lot sooner than what Robert Fisk is suggesting, 2018. I think we're going to see this, things developing a lot quicker. And what impact could the possible demise of the dollar as the world's reserve currency have on the U.S. economy? And can the U.S. do anything to prevent that happening? Well, the U.S., remember, it's less than 5% of the world's population, and um, it, its economy is a large part of the global economy, but it's fueled almost entirely by debt. So if the U.S. economy were to disappear overnight, it would, wouldn't be as the catastrophe that some in the U.S. argue it might be. Yeah, sure, there would be dislocations in the near term. But look what happened in the scandal last year in Wall Street in 2008. That was completely fabricated by 
uh, the folks on Wall Street to give themselves a huge bonus. You know, that was a fake, uh, really, collapse that they engineered, and they engineered this uh, rescue from the rest of the world to come bail them out in their bonuses. And the rest of the world is just saying, we're sick of your fake manipulation of the, uh, uh, your fake currency, your manipulation of the markets, your phony wars, and all the rest of it that goes with having the U.S. dollar as a world reserve currency. So the world is giving America a collective... Um, I can't make the gesture here on television, but it involves the use of a single finger and an outreach arm with a bent elbow. Thank you very much for your comments. That was Max Kaiser, activist and former stockbroker. Thank you very much.